power because if you give them something to do with the project, it makes them, uh, it gives them ownership of the project and they're more likely to accept it uh, and to feel part of it. The infantry and the engineers uh, stayed uh, five and four nights respectively, I think, at the, at the boys' school. I stayed one night with them. I think it was the night after um, the Dutch uh, the Dutch delegation at the nearby girls' school got bombed, so they retreated. We stayed. Uh, the engineers quit work in the evening when it got too dark, and from then it was just a matter of hunkering down and, uh, and staying safe through the night and picking up work again in the morning. Uh, the infantry had guards posted outside. They sent out patrols. So the, the Dutch and Australian strategy in, in Terran Coat is to not only provide... Um, some new infrastructure and to to provide some short-term education but to to lay the groundwork for sustainable improvement in uh, basic government infrastructures and in the economy here and there, there in Tarancote which means basically getting people uh, equipping them with the skills and the very basic physical tools they need to take over the job of improving the area once the coalition forces leave. So to that end, the Australians have detached a small number of their engineers and they built a trade training school at Camp Holland where um, applicants from Terran Coat, they get vetted and then they attend a, um, a multi-week course at, at Camp Holland learning basic trades like uh, generator maintenance, um, electrical maintenance, um, carpentry, things like that. And after uh, th these are these are classes taught by the Australians. After they graduate the course, they're given, depending on what course they took, they're given like a toolbox or a uh, a generator maintenance kit, and um, and then off they go to presumably teach this same skill to to other Afghans and to practice it and and you know work in their own town to improve conditions on their own. This is where we bring the local nationals in to try and give them some skills and life skills on the construction side of um, their community. They're picked by the village elders and then they're brought into us and then we go through a vetting process uh, where we pick their suitability, um, if they can read a little bit of English, speak a little bit of English or if they've had some schooling in their own community. The basic course consists of basic carpentry skills, how to cut different joins, uh, housing joins, tea houses. We teach them to make a toolbox, a Quran holder, a saw stool, which is what they will take with them when they go. Uh, they also make a desk each uh, for the local community and it goes into the schools. When they leave here, um, they will take a toolbox uh, full of tools. The Australians donate a gift of carpentry tools and the Dutch donate a socket set because with the basic course they can also do a basic generator maintenance course which they then get a socket set to pull the motors apart and do what they need to do with them. Because the reason why is when you close this, if it's tight, that will hit on here. We call that binding. And what it will do is, it will make this door want to spring up. They'll come here for four weeks, they'll come here for eight hours of the day, and they'll work seven days a week. We have four Australian instructors on the floor, and we have a total of six Afghani instructors here which we've had since the basic course and they continue on, they do the advanced course then we teach them the instructor course and they stay with us and they help us train the locals. Eventually we, we'd like to um, have the local people have their own training centre in town and the locals actually train their own locals once the army's pulled out. So what's the, the major obstacle to making that happen? That would be something for higher up to discuss whether they can build them a centre in town and we can give them all the equipment to do it. As you know, all the equipment that we use is pretty expensive. Um, but for us, it's giving them more knowledge. From our background, doing a four-year trade course, uh, we look at a four-month trade course or a four-week trade course is just not enough. With the uh, beginner's course, they learn the basics of how to do the cuts and the joints. The intermediate course, they'll learn about windows and doors uh, and furniture work because they're building uh, tables for the local schools. And then in the advanced course, we'll teach them how to lay down what we call bearers and joists, put a flooring down and then build some walls. 
and then show them how to put on a very basic roof. Uh, and then from that point, they've already learnt the windows and doors, so they can install the windows and doors themselves. We see the kids come in here, or the people come in here, and they're shy, timid, um, and very scared. And as the weeks go on, we see them walking around with their chest out. Uh, they're walking around with a sense of purpose. So we'll say, can you go and build this for us, or can you go and get that? And you know, they're now proud, and they're over there getting what they need. So if they can have a bit of pride in themselves, they won't look at the, the other side of life to, I don't know, uh, to look at the wrong side of life, I suppose. If we can give them some self-confidence in themselves, they'll stand up for themselves. The idea is you, if you give Afghans uh, opportunities to, uh, to, to make a better living, uh, to raise their families in peace, um, you know, to pursue things like the arts and, and um, education, that you, you slowly crowd out uh, sort of those psychological areas where extremism can infiltrate. Uh, there's, uh, the assumption is that desperation and extremism are, um, are sort of partners. If you alleviate the desperation, which is an economic thing, which is a a matter of um, freedom and governance. If you alleviate the desperation, you um, eliminate the the toehold for extremism, and that's the that's sort of the the moral philosophy behind using reconstruction as a uh, almost as a war fighting tool. But there are some practical aspects to it as well. Um, in Uruzgan and in nearby. Uh, Helmand province, so in other words, in, in Tarancoat and, and the, uh, the area around the city, most people are farmers, and the easiest cash crop for an Afghan farmer is opium, and the opium trade is controlled by the Taliban, which used the proceeds to fund the, the resistance in Afghanistan. So if you, if you can replace this illegal opium uh, cultivate or poppy cultivation with something legitimate and sustainable, then you, as a practical matter, dry up the funding source for the Taliban. The Dutch and Australians are pretty optimistic that their efforts in Tarancote are, are working, are working to improve conditions and as a result of improving conditions to sort of win people over from extremism and um, eliminate that space, that toehold for extremists to, to retain control over Terran Code and, and the area. Uh, but everyone, everyone laments that there's never enough money, there's never enough resources. Uh, Uruzgan province and Terran Code, they're big, uh, and the problems are enormous. And some, some say that reconstruction is even uh, a misnomer because there's nothing to reconstruct. This is just construction, starting from, from ground up with, in a medieval kind of environment, trying to uh, impose you know, first world standards for education and, and for, for the economy uh, on an area that's got nothing. So uh, while, while optimistic that they're doing some good, uh, everyone uh, is conscious of the fact that without sustained application of resources, that good might not last. And the Dutch told me that even with a total of around 3,000 people, um, they have reached the geographic limit of their, their ability to expand. They control Camp Holland, they control small circles of territory around Camp Holland, around Terran Coat, and around some of the, the outlying villages. To do more is going to require more people, more money, and more time. You can watch this program again on our website, cspan.org.